This is Cast of Wonders, the young adult fiction podcast featuring stories of the fantastic. Welcome! Episode 383 for November 10th, 2019. I'm your host this episode, Andrew K. Ho, assistant editor for Cast of Wonders. I'm also a writer with stories and essays published or forthcoming in Diabolical Plots, Highlights for Children, The Young Explorer's Adventure Guide, Volume 6, Parabnormal Magazine, December 2019, and here on Cast of Wonders. Today's story marks the start of Die November at Cast of Wonders. We have a collection of three clawed and toothy futuristic dinosaur stories for you this month. Five Functions of Your Bionosaur by Rachel K. Jones first appeared in Robot Dinosaurs on May 4, 2018. Rachel K. Jones grew up in various cities across Europe and North America, picked up and mostly forgot six languages, and acquired several degrees in the arts and sciences. Now she writes speculative fiction in Athens, Georgia. Contrary to the rumors, she is probably not a secret android. Rachel is a World Fantasy Award nominee, Tip Tree Award honoree, and winner of Writers of the Future. Her fiction has appeared in dozens of venues worldwide, including Lightspeed, Beneath Ceaseless Skies, Strange Horizons, and all four Escape Artists podcasts. Follow her on Twitter at Rachel K. Jones. This story is narrated by A.J. Fitzwater. A.J. Fitzwater is actually 1,000 tiny unicorns pedaling fast inside a snappy blazer. Their stories can be found in venues of repute such as Clark's World, Beneath Seas the Skies, and Andromeda Spaceways magazine. Their capybara pirate collection, The Voyages of Sinrak the Dapper, will sail from Queen of Swords Press in April 2020, and their World War II Land Girls shapeshifter novella, No Man's Land from Paper Road Press, will release in May 2020. When not taming the void, they Twitter at AJ Fitzwater. And now, we've a tale to tell. Five Functions of Your Bionosaur by Rachel K. Jones Narrated by A.J. Fitzwater Your parents first activate your bionosaur when they bring you home from the hospital. The bionosaur was a baby shower gift from your mom's favourite aunt. They were nervous about its size, the stainless steel maw, the retractable razor claws inside its stubby little arms. But the aunt had insisted. She'd programmed it herself, covered its titanium alloy skeleton in top-grade synth skin feather scales, and preloaded it with educational apps. When your bionosaur's eyes first flare to life, it scans tiny, squalling you, and reaches out a stubby claw to rock you. When it starts humming a jazzy rendition of the Batman theme, you quiet down and sleep. Your bionosaur can differentiate between hunger cries and dirty diaper cries. When your parents realise this, they call up the aunt and apologise for doubting. But your bionosaur just keeps singing, its glowing red eyes fixed upon you like you're the centre of all gravity, the origin of its universe. One thing your great aunt forgot to mention, bionosaur's imprint for life. The Bionosaur first uses its claws when you are six, and a speeding car swerves onto the sidewalk while you're squatting down making chalk drawings. Your Bionosaur darts out, faster than you've ever seen it move before, faster than you knew it could move, and rams the car's passenger side in time to change its trajectory. It takes off your Bionosaur's thick left leg and swerves into the mailbox. You scream and scream. Your bionosaur tries to crawl to your side to comfort you, but pale fluid spews from its burst hydraulic system until it flops in desperate electric circles. Mom and Dad send your bionosaur off for repairs. You don't sleep that week. You've always known the weight of your bionosaur's chin on your feet, the warmth of its battery pulsing through your blanket while it charges. 
When your parents bring your Bionosaur back from the repair shop, you'll shy around it. You've lived one whole week, and the Bionosaur wasn't there to share it with you. You never knew that could happen. You wonder if it was scared too. When its chin rests on your feet that night, warm and comforting, you stroke the synth skin feather scales on its tail, and wonder what it thought when the car roared around the corner, how it felt when the impact sheared off its leg, and where bionosaurs go when they die. Dating is hard with a bionosaur. You have to keep explaining why you're leaving at home alone while you go out with a stranger. Guys tend to freak out when you're making out and they spot your bionosaur looking on watchfully, its stainless steel teeth gleaming. Even when you explain the teeth are just for show. Eventually you figure out how to interface your bionosaur with your dating app. It learns to put on a pot of coffee when you're on the way home. One or two mugs, depending. As for you, you learn to stop apologising for the bionosaur. Guys who take pot shots at the poor old thing never stick around long anyway. It becomes your unofficial test. You can always tell whether someone really loves you by how easily they accept the deepest parts of you. Your bionosaur has kept you awake for the third night in a row. Its battery isn't holding a charge well and it's not auto-docking correctly, so the battery beeps every five seconds. You have to get out of bed to click the connection into the socket again and again. Piece of trash, you mutter. In the morning, you idly browse scrap websites and wonder what you might get for your bionosaur. That night, you throw up on the way home from work. You puke again on the bathroom floor, just short of the toilet. You crawl to the couch with a trash can flu-ridden and shiver beneath a pile of blankets, your stomach heaving up all the water you drink until it's just heaving itself, a slick of bile following each time. You wake up later when a warm, heavy weight rests on your feet. The puke has been cleaned from the trash can and a tray perches on the coffee table with hot chamomile tea and some cheese crackers. Your Bionosaur's battery beeps some more. It fetches you some orange juice, slowly, because it's low on power. Together, you fall asleep on the couch. You don't really notice the beeping after a while. They don't update your Bionosaur anymore. It went obsolete years back. You comb bidding sites for the odd replacement part, an LCD, replacement gaskets. It's only got the one eye now, and its stubby little arms click and squeal as it slowly shuffles around your kitchen, making you coffee. Its last remaining synth skin feather scales fall out one spring after it dashes through the rain to collect the mail. Your spouse gently suggests it's time to let it go, but you're not ready for that. The day comes when you bring home your own blanket-wrapped baby, place her in the crib, and introduce her to your, her, Bionosaur. Its single eye flares red. It reaches out a stuttering arm to rock her. It hums that jazzy Batman theme. That's when you know you won't get rid of your Bionosaur. That it will never be obsolete. Because you always believed in your heart of hearts, those teeth weren't just for show. Because you've got a whole notebook full of drawings of Bionosaur heaven. And all of them include you. Because all it ever wanted was for you to need it. Because Bionosaurs aren't the only ones that imprint for life. Five Functions of Your Bionosaur is one of those stories I'm glad I'm not narrating because it makes me tear up every time I read it, and I've read it three times. First, when I saw it on Robot Dinosaur, and twice while preparing to host this episode. It's one of those stories that hits me in the feels. 
I'd like to discuss a literary term called the objective correlative. The objective correlative was made popular by literary critic T.S. Eliot in 1919. It essentially refers to a repeated symbol that represents feelings. Think of it as the chorus or refrain in a song only in stories. Rachel K. Jones is many times published, so I've seen her work in several different venues besides Cast of Wonders. I've also seen her post on emotional resonance in creative writing, so I know that making and repeating symbols in her stories is something she purposefully does. Notice the line, quote, Bionosaur's imprint for life, end quote, in the beginning of the story. That line gets repeated at the end when our brave robot dino gets passed onto the narrator's child. Quote, Bionosaurs aren't the only ones who imprint for life, end quote. Note also the jazzy Batman theme our robot dino sings as a lullaby. Details like these are symbols that represent protectiveness and family, and the way they repeat in this story keeps us readers connected to the themes of what comprises family in Five Functions of Your Bionosaur. So, if you'd like to become an accomplished writer like Rachel, you can either 1. Learn to write objective correlatives into your creative work, or 2. Get your own Bionosaur that'll keep you encouraging to write. Join us again next time for another Dinovember story. We love bringing you the best audio fiction week after week, but we can't do it without your support. Your donations pay our authors, our narrators, our servers, and our staff. Please consider supporting us with a monthly donation through either PayPal or Patreon. You can also review us on Apple Podcasts, request us on Spotify, and consider the stories we publish for award consideration. There are lots of ways you can help. Join the discussion on the EA Forum, forum forum.escapeartist.net, or visit on Twitter at Cast of Wonders. Come say hello. Cast of Wonders is a production of Escape Artists Incorporated and is brought to you by editors Marguerite Kenner and Catherine Inskip. Assistant Editors, Andrew K. Ho and Carissa Sluss. Associate Editors, Tanya Bezpalco, Amy Brennan, Alicia Caparasso, Trace Fontel, William Height Minor, Sean Proctor, Ray O, oh, Susie Rodriguez, Emma Smales, and Chris Tang. Art Director, Alexis Goebel, Community Manager, Danny Daly, and our audio producer, Jeremy Carter. Our episodes are released under the Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. That means you can download or listen to the episode on any device you like, but you can't change it or sell it. Our theme music, Appeal to Heavens, is by Alexei Nov and available from Promo DJ or his Facebook page. Thanks for listening!